Ever heard the quote, don't be the smartest person in the room? Well, that's the quote I dislike the most. Want to know why? I'll gladly tell you right after the music. You're about to listen to a great episode of the Lads and Be Experienced podcast. Within this episode, my hope is that you obtain something that will help you find your success. So grab a pen, get your paper, your favorite snack or drink, and really listen to what I have to say. I truly believe it can be what you need to get you to your next level in life. So grab a seat and enjoy the ride. And I'll see you on the other side. Welcome back to another episode of the Last NBA Experience Podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening. Um, I think this is going to be another great, I know this is going to be another great episode, but it's going to be a little different than my, my other episodes where I usually give advice or give my tips on different things. Even though those are all still my opinion, I feel like this is more of an opinion piece where I'll be, I'm going to be talking about why I dislike or to a certain degree disagree with the quote, uh, don't be the smartest person in the room. Like I said, my other episodes, I usually give tips or give reasons or give advice on different things. This is more of my opinion, but just like every other episode, uh, you definitely should take it with a grain of salt because, again, this is just my opinion. But like every individual episode that I do this season, I will be starting it off with a little story time. So let's get right into it. So in college and probably in high school, too, there's always a quote unquote smartest person in the classroom. Now, the difference is in college, there were usually the people who messed up the curve for the rest of us, or at least for me. Now, for those people who might not know or don't, who might not have been to college or not familiar with the term curve, especially when it comes to college, um, it's basically when the professor helps the class pass by lowering the percentage it takes to pass, uh, to get a passing grade. So, um, Example might be, they might do it for an exam, they might do it for homework, they might do it for the entire percentage for that class, where they might say, okay, every person get a 10% bump on their last exam, or they might get 10, point, 10 points more on their last exam, so everyone would get more points. And it would be at the same grading scale, just you'll get 10 free points. Uh, the thing is, they usually don't, go lower they usually don't lower it to where the person would with the highest grade would get over a hundred percent so that usually where they draw the line or whether the curve is set so let's say the person on one exam someone had uh i don't know a 90 percent so they might add 10 more points so that person who got the highest score will have 10 or 100 100 percent and everybody else will still grow a little bit so hopefully it helps your grade now i must admit i'm never really the smartest person in the classroom when it cut when i was when i'm in college or right now which i'm pretty sure a lot of people is aren't and it's not really a big deal or anything like that but i have been able to grasp some, some great knowledge from the person who might be the smartest smartest i should say smartest student in the classroom. Sometimes they can teach you the material in a better way than you understand it or the way it's been taught by the professor because usually that professor may have taught that class, especially in college and especially I know in STEM, they might have taught that that class maybe 10, 15, 20 years. So they use basically the same PowerPoints. They might tweak some things uh, every uh, here and there and something like that, but usually it is the same powerpoints every year so they're just teaching it the same way every year where if you're learning it from a student who's close to your age and who's understanding it you can get some tips from them and possibly learn the material even a little better from from them 
so it's not a bad thing that there is a smartest person in a, in the classroom especially in college because you can definitely learn something from them don't be afraid to go up to them and ask them for help or ask them for advice because usually at least in my experience they're pretty nice people i mean they're students just like you they want to get a passing grade just like you they just might find it easier to get the material or they may i don't know they just they they just have that that knowledge or they have that skill to grasp the information so don't be afraid to go up to them and this kind of leads me into one of my points of my argument of why i dislike the quote don't be the smartest person in the room so let's get started in the main topic and let's get to these points of why i think the quote don't be the smartest person in the room is not the best quote so i first heard the quote don't be the smartest person in the room many many years ago and i actually agree with it back then like 100 percent agree with it like i didn't want to be the smartest person in the room because i wanted to learn from others and to me it sounded smart to have smarter people in the room to learn from and i i still believe that i still believe that's true i don't think that's a bad thing to go into a room to actually do but then I thought about it and I didn't think it was correct for every scenario or even for most of them, which is why I wanted to make a podcast episode about it. Now, I don't remember exactly who created the quote or even how it became popular amongst our on social media. And I think it's still kind of popular now within like podcasts and people who make content and that kind of thing. I also want to point out that when I'm referring to rooms, when I say the, the word room, like I'm not talking about a classroom or a lecture hall or anything like that. In those cases, most likely the smartest person in the room is the instructor or the professor or the teacher, which is totally fine. And part of the reason why that room kind of exists in the first place. So let's get into the five points of why I think being the smartest person in a room isn't such a bad thing. Now, I do want to point out one note before I get into those five points. Now, when I'm referring to a room, I believe it could be a host of different things. It can be a networking event that you're attending. It can be a club or organization that you're a part of. It can be basically any space, any event where there is a group of people. So it's not just talking about a literal room. It's more geared towards the people that you are around at a particular time. So number one, why I kind of dislike or disagree with the quote, uh, don't be the smartest person in the room. Is there always a smartest person in the room? Number one. Now, even before that, how can you tell if or who is that smartest person? You don't want to just go around quizzing everybody and being like, do you know this information? Do you know that information? Because that's weird and you're not going to get nothing out of that. Um, The room can have people with diverse knowledge that's not just really easy or even possible to tell who's the smartest person in the room. So again, you don't want to just go around trying to figure that out because in the end, that's just going to be a waste of your trying, trying to figure that out. And you're going to miss out on a lot of different opportunities. That room could bring you like new connections, new knowledge, building your network and that sort of thing. Uh, You also will never know or find out everything someone knows. So just because they might not be an expert or know a lot within the subjects that's being talked about or discussed in that room doesn't mean they're not smart or brilliant or have good advice about other areas. So you never want to just cut someone off or you never want to just think about who's the smartest person in the room because it's just going to be a a, a waste of time basically. So Moving on to number two of why I don't like the quote, don't be the smartest person in the room. So number two, why is it even a bad thing to be the smartest person in the room? Now, let's just say somehow everyone knows who's the smartest person in the room is. So because of that, should that person 
just leave the room i mean that would for me that wouldn't make any sense for a person like i'm the smartest person in the room now i need to leave because i'm the smartest person in the room but whatever if that person leaves that person just missed out on opportunity to to build their brand and to solidify themselves as a subject area in whatever subject that's being talked about in that room. So a little side note, I don't think entrepreneurs or business owners or CEOs, those are not the only people who should be building a brand or being considered as a subject, subject ex expert. If you want to move up in the corporate ladder, no matter what industry or field you're in, or even if you just want to have self-improvement, having a good brand and being labeled a subject expert can put you in rooms, in spaces, in events that other things like a, a good resume or a college degree really can't get you. And that can help you accomplish the goals that you want to reach. So just because you think you are or it's, it's um, evident that you're the smartest person in the room doesn't mean you can't learn something or grow or build a connection. Because if people start seeing you as the smartest person in the room, they're going to want to go to you for that information, for that content. They might want to get a consultant from or be a consultant for you to be their consultant or for you to be a guest on our podcast or you to be a, a guest speaker at their at their business or with their group or something like that you never know and then also again if let's say everyone knows who the smartest person in the room and you go on by everyone is going by the quote don't be the smartest person in the room that just means that that person will have to leave and if that person leaves that leaves someone else to be the smartest person in the room which means that person will have to leave, which makes another person the smartest room in the room. And until there's basically no one else in the room and what's the use of that room if there's no one in it to use it. So that was, that's my re main reason why I think that's kind of a misleading or not a good quote to go by. Um, you also, as the smartest person in the room also have a chance to help others grow their knowledge in that subject and again help you become a subject expert and someone people want to contact when they have questions or want expert opinions about anything and again no matter where you want your life to go no matter what field you're in no matter if you want to be an entrepreneur or you just want to be a manager at your your current company having people to back you having people to who believe in, in, in the information that you have, who can vouch for you, it's always a good thing to have. So don't be afraid to be in the room if you're considered the, the smartest person in the room. Moving on to number three of why I don't like the quote, being the smartest person in the room. Don't be the smartest person in the room. Number three, being the smartest person in the room doesn't mean you know everything i don't think there's a single person human being on this earth or not on this earth that knows everything i don't even think the internet knows everything and it knows a lot so that means you always have room to grow and room to learn something new even if you are the smartest person in the room on that specific subject you can still have room to grow within that subject or subjects that have been talked about within that room or within conversation. So you can always grow no matter where your knowledge is right now. There's always room to, to build and again, to connect with people. So it really doesn't matter if you're the smartest person in the room because really the most uneducated person in the room could still teach you something you never knew. And I say un the most uneducated because I don't, want to make it seem like a bad thing just because you're you're not the smartest or just because you you might not know as much as everybody in the room doesn't mean you don't know anything it doesn't mean you don't know you're you're not smart so even as again i'm using quotes for this 
the most uneducated person in the room doesn't mean you don't have something to give to that room. All right, now we can move on to my fourth point of why I don't like the quote, don't be the smartest person in the room. So number four, you can be a part of multiple rooms. Like there is no limit to how many rooms, well, I guess time is a limit, but there's really no limit to how many rooms you can really participate in. You don't have to focus just on one room or one organization or one event, you can participate in as many events, organizations, rooms as time allows you to. I actually encourage you to do this because that's how you really not only build your network and grow your connections, that's also how you build your knowledge and um, build your knowledge and grow your knowledge. Some rooms you may be among the top as far as knowledge for that uh, particular subject matter. In some rooms you may not be. So whatever room you're in, just go in there with an expectation of getting something out of it. Whether it's getting something out of it and giving something to it, I should say. Because uh, networking is a multi-way street, I guess you can say. I don't think it's just two ways, it's multi-ways. Because you can give to as many people as people, as many people as can give to you. So definitely go into every situation trying to learn something from it and be again be a part of multiple rooms you can even create rooms where you are the person who's again quote unquote the smartest person so you can give your knowledge and give your expertise to those in the room again help you build your your expertise helping you build your brand so people want to go to you when they have a particular problem or they they want your advice on something but you can also build rooms where you're not the smartest person in a room or there may not be a smartest person in a room so everyone in the room can continue to grow from each other connect with each other and build a network so don't be afraid to be a part of multiple rooms and don't be afraid to create your own rooms too that leads me to my last point of why I think the quote, don't be the smartest room, don't be the smartest person in the room should forever be gone. And number five, that is, there are worse things to be than the smartest person in the room. So number one, you could not be invited to the room or known about the room in the first place. If you are not, if you don't know about a room that you're interested in, or you would have been interested in. That's just one less opportunity for you to meet new people, to grow your knowledge, to build your network. So I think that's a lot worse than, than being the smartest person in the room. Another thing that's worse than that is you could be in the room and then leave with nothing to show for it. So you can go to a room that you're interested in, but you come out of it and you have no new knowledge you have no new connections, you have no new network. You just come in the same way you left out. That is a lot worse than being the smartest person in the room. It doesn't mean that you knew everything or knew everyone in the room. It could be you just wasn't paying attention to people. You were distracted by something like trying to figure out who the smartest person in the room or a host of other reasons. So I think that's a lot worse than being the smartest person in the room. You also could be you also could be invited to the room and have no interest in what's being talked about in that room and that can waste time and potentially money for you and the other people that's in that room because for you you're in a room you're not interacting for a lot of people if they're not interested in something but they're still there they're not going to put in an, an effort to get to know people to build their knowledge to um get just to like be a part of the room they're just gonna be there and wasting their time where they could have been a part of the room that they're interested in or could have been doing something that they're interested in doing and then for other people if they come try to talk to you they're wasting their time because again you have no interest in what they're talking about or the subjects they're talking about so now you're just in there wasting time and and this can negatively affect your um your brand 
because if you're in the room and you are not giving off positive energy or or giving off that you're interested in that subject especially if you have like a name tag on or something like that people are gonna like remember that and be like that guy or that girl was not good she didn't give anything she didn't show any interest she or he was just out there and wasted my time and that can definitely negatively impact your your brand and then lastly what's worse than being the, the smartest person in the room is you could decide not to go to an event at all and miss out on again potential opportunities to grow potential network to build potential connections to connect with I have a small story uh, kind of pertaining to that where uh, here in Indy or Indianapolis uh, before the pandemic and now that the pandemic is not as I guess mainstream now uh, they have these events called live after five and they have it usually once a month and sometimes it's usually in different places around Indy mostly downtown Indy and at these events, it's basically a big networking event where people from different backgrounds, different industries, um, just different people. And they come together and we basically connect with each other. We build with each other. We potentially get new jobs, potentially get new partners, potentially get new, new clients. And before the pandemic, I've been to a lot of them. And after the pandemic, pandemic or right now when they start bringing it back i've been i've been to one so far i think they had like two or three of them but there are some times where i felt like i really don't want to go to this even though i put it on my calendar weeks in advance and some reason i don't know if it's because i'm an introvert or whatever but when it came come down to an hour a day before or whatever before the event starts some reason i'm like i really don't want to go to the event this event why would I, I get nothing from it or whatever but i don't let that negative talk or that negative mindset get to me i just take it and i keep going to the event because i said i was going to go to the event and i blocked out this time to go to the this event and for the most part every time i went to a networking event I got something out of it, whether it was, again, new knowledge, new connection, building my network. And a lot of those people that I connected with at those events, I'm still in connection with years later. So it's definitely a good thing to con to go to these events or go to go to something, even if you don't feel like going or whatever. Of course, emergencies come and you have to take care of emergencies or whatever but if it's just like i don't want to go i'd rather lay down in my bed you good you're going to be missing out on a lot of opportunities to build your network and build your knowledge it's, it's just like going to the gym maybe you say i'm going to the gym three days a week after work and an hour before works in you're like man i really don't want to go go to the gym i just spent all this time at work but i guarantee you I would say 99% of the time, if you decide to still go to the gym, you're going to feel a lot better after you get out the gym than you would have if you did not go to the gym. So definitely don't just miss out on opportunities just because you don't want to go. Definitely go there despite your mindset, despite what anybody else say, just just push through it because I'm, I'm, I guarantee for the most part is going to work out. So in the end, the smartest person in the room shouldn't deter you. If you're the smartest person in the room, it shouldn't deter you from going to that room. You never know what you will learn. You never know who you're going to meet. So definitely, I don't care if you, if it, if it's like definite that you're the smartest person in the room or you just in your head think you're the smartest person in the room, definitely still go to that room. And then on the flip side, kind of talked about this earlier, you shouldn't be discouraged to be in the room if you're quote unquote the most uneducated person or you self-proclaim as the most uneducated person in the room because you don't have a degree or you don't have a certificate or whatever. Still go to that room. 
take that negative of you being the most uneducated person in that room and turn it into a positive where you where you have the opportunity to learn and grow the most from the others in that room. And with that, those are the reasons why I don't believe in the quote, don't be the smartest person in the room. But before I let you go, I have a challenge of the week as I've been doing with all of my individual episodes and I would love for you to participate in it. So this challenge I have for this week is something I think you shouldn't just do for this week. I think it should be something, something you do for the rest of your life. So this week I challenge you for every room that you enter in to get something out of it. Whether it's a new connection, whether it is knowledge, whether it's a different perspective on something or different, pers- uh, different view on something, get something out of it and go into it looking for that something. Like if it's a networking event, go in there saying, I want to connect with, or I want to build my network with three new people. Or if it's a conference, say I want to build my knowledge on A, B, and C. Go in there with a, an attitude, a mindset of, I'm going to get something out of this interaction. And then on the flip side of this challenge, I also want you to go into every room, every situation and bring something to that room where someone else can also do the same thing. I want you to bring whether it's again, a connection with yourself or connection with someone, you know, uh, whether it's knowledge that, you know, whether it's perspective or viewpoint that you have go in there again with the mindset of i'm going to help someone else build their network i'm going to help someone else build their knowledge i'm going to help someone else see a different viewpoint and with that that is my episode of don't be why i don't like the quote don't be the smartest person in the room thank you for listening to again another episode of the lazenby experience podcast i hope you was able to gain something from it to help you along your success journey if you liked what you heard today please 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 like share comment subscribe so i can not just know that you're listening but also know that you're enjoying the content If you have questions, if you have comments, you have topic ideas or even guest ideas, because I definitely will be bringing on more guests, not just this season, but future seasons. Uh, Please don't hesitate to email me at lazenbyexperience at gmail.com or leave it in the comments as well. Seasons one and two are also still available for everyone to listen to on all platforms you may listen to podcasts that's including apple Podcasts, spotify youtube and basically anywhere else you listen to podcasts at the lazenby experience podcast lastly for my readers out there i have a blog that covers every individual episode this season um, and you can find that at lazenbyexperience.wordpress.com Uh, Also within my blog, I have articles from season two, as well as articles from before I even started a podcast. So you have a lot of content that you get can get into as well. And then also leave a comment and share with others um, when it comes to my blog, because, again, I, I would love to hear your feedback. I would love to hear what you think about it so I can produce even Uh, more content like it and even greater content so i do want to say again thank you for listening to yet another episode of the lazenby experience podcast and as always until next time continue your journey until you reach your success thank you for taking the time to listen to this episode of the lazenby experience podcast I really hope you were able to receive valuable information that will help you take actionable steps to get you closer to achieving your goals. If this is true for you, I would really appreciate it if you share this episode with others, comment your thoughts, and subscribe to continue receiving updates on new episodes. I truly am excited about how my experience, the Lazenby experience, can make a difference in your life. Again, thank you for listening to the Lazenby experience podcast. 
And until next time, continue your journey until you reach your success.